been a cold week, but I'm back. So uh, after having uh, a lot of work uh, with uh, Heavy D, uh, we had a lot of stuff to do up at his uh, uh, lodge for some snow escapades. Uh, finally, at the end of the week, I can get back on to the cement mixer. And as I left off before, I just put some bolts in just to hold the engine so it wouldn't flop when I moved it around. Let's see if this engine works. But I still have one thing that I need to do to this engine before I start it. And because I'm not really happy with the, the block and the cracking and all that, I am going to make a plate to distribute the weight uh, for the base of this. So I am going to make a quarter inch plate, the same as this, uh, the base on this motor with these holes here. So uh, even though I've pounded this as flat as I can, I'm just going to make it so that the plate itself will distribute the weight to the bottom. So not all the force is on the aluminum if there's any issues here or even as it's running and uh, the force uh, from uh, just mixing on the gears ends up like trying to tweak it. So I'm going to try to distribute the force. So I need to make a plate. So I got to get on SolidWorks real quick and cut out that quarter inch plate. You know, I didn't notice this when I first flipped the engine over. There is not much metal in this uh, casting. They've got all these recesses. So yeah, having this plate, I've drawn out basically my plate and it's sort of funky shapes on the bottom. So I'm gonna make a plate that fits in there nicely. And I notice that this part of the base actually sticks down right here on both sides and has been forced down onto the plate even though it sticks out from the bottom just slightly. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it doesn't. It just, just doesn't look quite right, but oh well, the uh, plate should really help out. Do a little more like looking at the base of that motor. And in order for them to save money on casting, basically aluminum, they put their tolerances almost about round down to zero on what will fit or not fit. And I could have made just a basic rectangular plate, but I noticed that there was like where the bolts to drain the oil out, the washers tend to stick out slightly more than the base. I don't know if anybody really notices. You wouldn't really notice that. I mean, if you bolt it, once you bolt it down tightly, it's just like really tight on it. So, after doing a lot of work, I made some notches right around at the edge where the bolts for the drain uh, is. And then there's a piece that sticks out a little bit. I decided to just add a little bit there. But basically, this is sort of the shape of the bottom. I did also make a little notch out of the bottom down here. And that's because of the, the gearbox which bolts in. It tends to stick down just slightly and uh, the gasket definitely comes down below but I mean when you normally bolt it up it would simply uh, just squish the gasket slightly and then I noticed uh, since I believe it was this side right here had the crack it's been a little bit uh, deformed so I'm gonna have to take a grinder and grind it so I've got a smooth edge right there it's just just slightly in that area uh, which is sort of weird. So I think I've got my basic uh, plate made. So I'll cut this thing out and then I will make sure everything fits flat on the base of the motor because I want this thing to be just snug right flat on it so it takes all the uh, stress rather than the aluminum housing because I didn't like my, my uh, weld job. I mean, I just fought it and fought it and fought it and after hours of work, uh, it was, I consider, adequate. But it may crack again later, so this plate hopefully will relieve the stress and make it so it won't crack later. So, all right, well now I'm going to uh, finish on the solid works here and we'll go over and cut it on the table. And there's my part.
I got my plate all made, fits up just perfectly. Got me some uh, very thin rubber washers to place between the base and this plate. And I will mount it on. And then once we get it mounted on, then we can try to see if the engine works. I haven't tested it. I may be doing all this and it doesn't run. Because there's a lot of things that could have gone wrong. Like one, when I was removing the, uh, the, the gearbox section of this, some of the gears in the engine compartment slipped out a little bit. Thought I did the best to put them back in to the correct marks, but I could be wrong. Or the engine could have been bad to begin with. Or a lot of things, even like the uh, oil pressure uh, sensor could be damaged. Uh, now that I could probably bypass, but anyways, uh, let me get uh, this plate and this motor put on. And then finally we can try to see if it'll run. We're close to uh, the big test. Got it filled with the oil. Got a little bit of gas in it, not too much. Checking, not leaking fuel, so that my switch must be working there. And I think that's the choke right there. This is the throttle. Everything seems to be here. I got my push button for off there. So the only thing I have now is how am I going to turn this thing? Pressure. Well, I am going to guess from most of my experiences that it's got to run uh, clockwise. Oh, 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 I got the on and off switch. Wait, I guess that's like another stop switch. Oh, that's sort of weird. I guess two switches. So, what I'm going to find, I need to find a socket and then I will put on a drill and turn it with a drill. Other than that, I don't have a real easy way to uh, turn it unless I go and buy a housing. But as I say, I don't know if this engine runs. So let me uh, get a drill and a socket. See if we can turn that. All right, I got me an adapter and a drill. I'm gonna see if we can get this thing to start. Turn the fuel on. on. It's very dark in here. So we have the fuel on. Look at that. There's no real marks on telling me which way is which on this. Yep, we'll try it that way. And full choke. Now I've got like an adapter that is half inch. It's a Milwaukee goes down really small. Not sure if it's going to handle the force. I'll be surprised if it does. Well, here we go. We didn't seem to get anything. A little bit of ether in here and see what happens. That's uh, sort of funny. The chuck came out. That is a good sign. We've got it running. So that means at least I don't have all my uh, sprockets in the wrong place. But it just doesn't seem like it's getting any fuel. Let's try uh, this again. good we just got to figure out what is going on with our fuel so 
That's back down to the carburetor issue. Try it again. Put this around a little bit. still have a problem but it looks like the base engine is good so we just need to figure out why I'm not getting any fuel so I have to take this off but I've got to make a run and I'll be right back I'm back and I've taken off all these parts put a couple of nuts on there to hold the carburetor so I can see everything that's going on. I know I have fuel here because I opened this up and fuel dripped out. And I know I've got fuel in the float bowl now. So I don't know if maybe just since I've been gone for a couple hours, the fuel's finally like worked its way in or not. But I think we are set to try it again. some issue with my carburetor probably one of the jets or something is uh, blocked I've got that's closed I guess I need to take the carburetor back off and check some stuff. I figured out why we're not getting the fuel going uh, into the engine. Took the carburetor apart, took off the out the main jet, which is fairly easy, but it's really you really can't see, but all the way down inside there, there's another brass fitting. And there's supposed to be a passageway that goes all the way in side there and comes out there. It's completely blocked. Nothing is going through there. And I've been trying to spray uh, carb cleaner through it and nothing is going through it. So that the main uh, orifice for the main jet is plugged. And I don't know yet how I'm going to get it free. I'm looking at seeing maybe if I have some really, really thin wire that maybe I can poke through, but I've been trying on a few very fine wires, but it's not doing the job. So I'm gonna keep working on it, see if I can get that open. 
Well, I've uh, managed to uh, work through the blockage with a tip cleaner set on the smallest wire for an oxyacetylene torch tips. And I was able to finally get that port cleared. So now I'm just going to use the rest of the uh, carb cleaner and uh, keep spraying through that uh, hole and uh, checking to see if there's anything else that might be plugged and then put it back together. Now we're going to try it again. With all that port's all cleared out on that carburetor. Hopefully it'll start. Sounded like it wanted to start there for a second. Uh, well, I haven't put any ether in it. This end keeps coming off. Yay, except I'm running almost full choke, which means there's still some sort of an issue with the carburetor. So that's really nice. I know this thing is running. 
No, I just have a carburetor issue. Um, not really sure what is causing it. It seems like the ports are clear. Uh, there's not much that I can do about tearing it apart because there's not very many pieces. There is just a brass piece that's down inside that's stuck that I, that should come out when I put the uh, uh, main jet out, but it isn't coming out. I don't know if maybe running it for a while or not might help it out, but let's see what else I can do. But uh, at least I uh, know uh, the engine is still here. We don't have any oil leaks out of the side. Everything's holding. I really think in that even with a car with a choke on, I think I'm gonna hook the chain up and let's see if this thing will turn. Well, I noticed one thing. I had a little bit of an oil leak. Now it's not coming from the weld on the crack, but if I push on this gasket, this cover right here is not fully setting onto this. So I'm gonna have to pull this cover piece off and put some uh, silicone in there on that gasket. Otherwise, I'm gonna have my oil leak out. It's not a big leak, it just sort of seeps out between this gasket right here, above where the weld is. So, it seems like the gasket's a little bit loose right in this area. So, great, I gotta go over and take this cover back off and then reseal this gasket. Well, the uh, crack that I welded looks fine. Uh, everything seems to be okay. Let me turn the light on there. Oh, that's pretty bright. But it's right in here where the gasket was not sealing. So I'm going to put some more material. It looks like even a little bit right here it wasn't uh, sealing very well. So I'm going to put a little bit more of the silicone right in this area right here and uh, make sure I put enough in there that it'll seal up and not leak right there, but eh, the crack seems fine. I don't see anything uh, moving in there. Just bad seal right there, because that's uh, welded right down there where you almost can't see. So, all right, I'm going to uh, some more of this and hopefully get this thing sealed up so it won't leak. Well, I got the silicone on the gasket and put it all together. So it's just sitting right here. I've got it tilted so that the pressure of the oil isn't right onto the uh, uh, gasket material, the basically uh, uh, a silicon base. So I'm gonna just uh, quit for now, let that cure overnight, and then tomorrow come in and uh, bolt it back down. And hopefully it won't leak out of uh, that area right there. So, yeah, I went around all the way where the oil is going, where the oil level maximum could be. I put the uh, silicone. So, all right. Well, you'll see me tomorrow. I'm back, and uh, it's the morning. Give uh, enough time for the, uh, uh, the silicon based gasket maker to. Uh, cure or at least somewhat so I stood it back up doesn't seem to be leaking bolted it back in I'm all ready to try it out again to see if it starts since uh, took it apart and I've hooked the chain up so we will see if I can get the mixer to work and still there's still a problem with the carburetor that I almost have to run it on full choke to run but uh, we'll see if it runs now because I don't know, uh, after putting it back together, whatever happened last night, maybe it won't work. <laughs> so, all right, I'm gonna try it out. Let's see if I can just start it just on the carburetor.
bit. Well, the engine's got some horsepower behind it. So, I'm going to shut it down. Well, I've put it all back together. And I put some uh, Lucas uh, fuel treatment stuff in my tank here uh, to run through it uh, to hopefully maybe clean the carburetor. And I don't know if it was that or just putting all this stuff back on. But now it run, it will run with the choke fully off. Little rough, so I have to give it a little bit of choke. I think if I just keep running uh, uh, cleaner through it and everything, I think it's going to be just fine. So I've got it put all together. I've got to chip out just a little more concrete on that center. I want to get it all that right off. And then I've got some uh, little repairs to do here. So I am going to pull this over down there where the welder is. So I'm just going to fix up a bunch of little stuff. And I still got some stuff on my plate for making uh, a skid so a forklift can grab it and some ideas. So I'm not going to get to that in this video. But I'm just going to finish up getting a bunch of this little stuff uh, fixed and all running. And uh, then we'll come to a conclusion. But let's see how we go on just fixing up the little stuff. Yeah, this thing uh, has been had some uh, broken welds and stuff and bent. Got uh, sort of this side sort of taken care of. Got this. Things looking good. Or welding. Well, after doing a lot of the sheet metal repairs on the uh, uh, cover of the uh, cement mixer, this is what it looks like. I was able to get some uh, Rust-Oleum uh, eh, Royal Blue and it matches up pretty close. I sort of ran out of it, uh, but for the top. And then I went back to the store and they were out. So it actually is pretty good. The engine's running great. I got a, uh, I'm not going to open it up to touch it. But I've got to get the pull start mechanism that bolts on the front of that. That should be fairly easy. And uh, I still have a little bit of concrete in that center. I chipped most of it out, but there's still a little bit more I can get out. Yeah, it runs great. It's nice that something that a project like come see. Other, I was really worrying that maybe. Yeah, it's just gonna be for parts, $500 parts. But it's nice for $500 to have. Basically, for this size of a mixer, well, on a trailer and everything, new is six to $7,000. Uh, so this is a nine cubic foot machine. And I've still got some welding work to do, but basically for this uh, little uh, two part series on, can I get it running? I'm done. So over the probably next few weeks, I will order some of the parts for it. And I am going to make a really neat a base for this. And I want to design it so it can be put on and off a trailer or loaded on and off a pickup truck. Uh, and then using the forklift to be able to do that. So I thank everyone for watching. Uh, it's been really interesting. I mean, I've had to do a lot of stuff to get this thing working more than I thought, <laughs> but I got it working. So thank you all for watching. Please subscribe if you like all this content and like, uh, and then you can also click on notifications 
And as every every time I say at the end of the videos, I'll Go see you on the next. Follow my channel. That's what you say, right? Oh, great! <laughs> Look at this. He comes in. And he, he interrupts the end of it. But that's awesome. See you next time.